Sonia talks, the, the Bible speaks of its wisdom and high moral teaching. It's become the standard for most of the nations worldwide as a uh, foundation for moral thought, as a guide for our daily lives. It gives patterns that are copied right around the world. I lived for um, uh, 17 years in India. I know there's many people here in the, in the audience today that are from India. And, and if you look at the institutions that have been con that were constructed there by the British, and, the, and if you look at the constitution and the laws and the infrastructure, but mainly look at the laws that have still reta been retained in India. This is 50 years after colonial uh, the colonials the, uh, the colonists left, the British left India, and yet still today they are still copying, they are still using biblical laws in their constitution. Why is that? Because there's something unique about those laws. There's something unique that they have realized that supersedes even though they are, by my majority, a Hindu nation. There's something that supersedes the Hindu laws. Now, it's interesting that a place like Japan, where I lived for two years, here's a country that had no colonial past, and yet it has adopted as its constitution, or I'd say modeled its constitution, on the American constitution, which is, again, modeled on a Judeo-Christian biblical principles. Why a secular culture like Japan adopt such a religious, moral, and, and uh, institutional framework, it's because they realize that there's something that's unique about the Bible. There's something that's unique about the biblical principles. I lived in Senegal for five years, and here is a country that has 92% Islamic uh, population, and yet they refuse to take on the Sharia law because they realize it's not workable in the 20th century, and they still retain their colonial French laws, which is, again, based and modeled. I'm not saying it's, 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 it's diametry uh, uh, similar to uh, biblical laws, but it's modeled on these biblical laws. I used to talk to my Senegalese friends, why? And they, they came out right, out right out in the open, because we cannot use Islamic law in a place like West Africa or anywhere, because it does not work in the 20th century. Now, if you want to look at the document that really pins this down, look at the United Nations document, Declaration of Human Rights. There are about 21 articles in there. Just look down through the articles in this, human, uh, this document. And here's a document that is probably the most secular uh, or universal document that has been now ratified or, or signed by about 126 different nations. And look at this document. You will find, if you go down each one of the articles, almost every one of them are biblical in context. But many of them, Muslims cannot adhere to. Article 4, Article 5, Article 7 through 10, Article 16, and particularly Article 18. Freedom of thought and religion, to change one's religion. Muslims are very well aware that, that, Muslim, that you are here in this country, but in, under a Muslim context, you may not, a Muslim may not move out or change or become a, a move to another religion, convert to another religion. This is something that we now see a universal document, or you might say a secular document, has, do, has, has taken on, adopted, what we find are basic, basic biblical principles. And of course, then lastly, it's life-changing power. The impact it has had for the spreading of the Bible around the world. What point do I have to go on to? Point number one? Nine. Yeah, the universal application of the laws of the Bible. So many countries, Japan, India, and all of that uh, started applying the laws of the Bible. Uh, folks, not every law. And we have agreed that some laws in the Bible really are from God. But you, you, you take a look at this one. See if really you would recommend this law today. This is from Deuteronomy chapter uh, 13. In verse number... 13, Deuteronomy number th chapter 13, verse 13. If in any of the cities which the Lord your God gives you to dwell in, you hear it said that certain scoundrels have sprung up among you and have led astray the inhabitants of their city to serve other gods whom you have not known, you must inquire carefully into the matter and investigate it thoroughly. If you find that it is true and an established fact that this abomination has been committed in your midst, you shall put the inhabitants of that city to the sword, dooming the city and all life that is in it, even its cattle to the sword. Having heaped up all its spoils in the middle of its square, you shall burn the city with its spoils as a whole burnt offering to the Lord your God. Let it be a heap of ruins forever, never to be rebuilt. You shall not retain anything that is doomed, that the blazing wrath of the Lord may die down, and he may, sh he may show you mercy, and in his mercy for you, may multiply you as he promised your fathers on oath, because you have heeded the voice of the Lord your God, keeping all his commandments which I enjoin on you today, doing what is right in his sight. Would you recommend that law, Smith, for any country today, whether Japan or India? You see, some of the Bible is the word of God, and if we apply that, great. But just because some people apply the law doesn't prove it's the word of God, because some people will not apply some other laws, like this one I just read out to you, and that doesn't 
proves that it is not the word of God. It just proves that people do not want to apply it. There may be other reasons why you think that's not the word of God. But whether people apply it or not doesn't make any difference for the word of God. You're using there an ad populum appeal, which is a logical fallacy. Number 10, that the Sharia is not applied in certain lands. Again, that doesn't prove or disprove that it's the word of God. It just proves that some people don't want to follow the word of God. If you have the word of God, Jesus came and he preached to the people and the people don't accept it. Does that mean what he's preaching is not the word of God? Or it proves that the people are wrong? Number 11, the United Nations documents on human rights demanding freedom of thought. You say that the Quran doesn't agree with that, so therefore the Quran is not the word of God. Well, if a document has to agree with the United Nations Declaration on Human Rights, what would you say to Deuteronomy chapter 13, where it says that if anyone commits apostasy, you should kill that person, you should stone that person to death. And it says furthermore, if your brother, your sister, your wife, your whoever, your closest ones, if they call you to worship someone else other than the God that you have known, you should be the first one to stone him to death. It says in verse 11, you shall stone him to death because he sought to lead you astray from the Lord your God. That I'm sure will not agree with the United Nations Declarations on Human Rights. <laughs>